Tonight, immigration. The tricky issue that has tormented government after government for decades that many believe lay behind Brexit. Tonight, it has the Home Secretary under pressure again. Uh, Louise Brown in Sunderland. Um, do you have the same problem? Um, I think that we do need more immigration, yes. Um, since Brexit, there's been huge gaps in services due to shortage of staff. So here in Sunderland, we used to have lots of Polish bus drivers, for example, and now a lot have returned home. Um, the buses simply don't run properly and are very unreliable, and I'm dreading getting on them tomorrow. It's not just buses, though. There's also shortages okay. everywhere, um, so agriculture and food industry. Um, okay. And British workers clearly don't always want to fill these roles. OK. Um, hold, so hold that thought, I've Louise. As, mm -hmm. Hold that thought, Louise, because I think that's a very important point. Rob McNeil, um, it's a big problem, isn't it? Well, it's certainly a challenge, but, I mean... A lot of this is about low-skilled migration. And when I say low-skilled, I mean, I don't want to be pejorative about this. We're just talking about jobs that don't require a lot of training to, to, before you qualify to do them. Um, but that's, those are the people that can't come into the country now, and that's effectively as a result of Brexit. Brexit, people voted specifically to try and reduce the number of low-skilled migrants in, coming into the UK. And that was very specifically the objective of the policy. It was the objective of Brexit. You know, the government has basically said they want to move to a high-skilled, high-wage economy. And so, yes, I mean, it creates serious problems. Um, but the question is, are those the problems that are those problems that people are willing to accept in return for lower migration, particularly lower-skilled migration? OK. Uh, uh, Stephen Kinnock, uh, is part of the problem here British workers are, well... They don't want to do certain jobs, but uh, they also don't want too many migrants because uh, the unions think that they bring down wages. You need a balance. We're not going to back, go back to free movement of Labour. That's clear. That's clearly Labour's policy. We need a points-based immigration system, but we need one that's based on proper dialogue between trade unions and the government and employers so that you have a workforce plan on a sector by sector basis and that plan says this is the amount of immigration we're going to need and this is how we're going to train up our local workers and pay them properly thus making it more attractive to homegrown talent but without letting it, the in, the sector collapse because you don't is, allow is enough a, immigration but, to come in but is the net result of that that actually we will have more immigrants more migrants doing work I see it as a balancing out so that you will need in some sectors immigration to ensure that the sector can keep functioning. And we're seeing real problems in hospitality, in health and social care, in agriculture. But So bring the migrants in, but make sure that you make the employers give you a proper workforce plan with proper recruitment, proper way of putting wages up, developing skills and productivity. That's the deal that the government should be doing with trade unions and employers so that over a, over a time cycle, maybe two, three years, you're reducing immigration and increasing homegrown talent and opportunities. What you can't, though, okay. do is just turn the tap off because that's really dangerous for the sector and for the economy. All right. I wish we could talk about it more, but we can't. We have to go to a break.